how you're going to define Greg Ferrone is his fastball command. 18 innings of baseball scheduled today between Alabama and Texas A&M, and we are underway in game one of this doubleheader. After missing for ball one, he's in the strike zone. Scott Klein calling balls and strikes. Gavin Grohovac, 13 homers as a freshman, was five for 11 last week against Vanderbilt with two home runs. Greg Ferrone, typically the Saturday starter for the Tide, has really started to continue his development as a weekend rotation guy for the Tide. And it, like I said, fastball, 90 to 94, slider, and he'll work in that change up to the righties. Got a good fastball there to even the count at two balls and two strikes. An ultra competitor on the mound for the Crimson Tide and really moving into this first game of the series, he can set the tone. And he will with a strikeout. Got him on the fastball. Good pitch right there for Greg Ferrone. Started to elevate the zone, had his fastball, has a little tail at the end on the right-handed hitter. So great start for Greg. After getting the strikeout, now a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup against Jace Laviolette. Center fielder for Texas A&M, who is so rare, and he's somebody that scores a lot of runs, second nationally in runs scored with 56, but also in the top 10 in the nation with 18 home runs. He's really a five-tool player, Roger, for this A&M team. Can really do it all. You play center field, you can run down some balls, but he really brings a lot of thump to the lineup for A&M. Breaking ball for a strike. The one, two. Lavulette stays alive. 319 hitter overall. It was 18 home runs, 46 runs vetted in. For Chase Laviolette, a sophomore and a great freshman campaign, but he has turned it up a notch this season. Yeah, for AM, got a unique classification. You know, Grahovic, freshman, Laviolette, sophomore, you got four or five sprinkled in seniors, so this is a well balanced squad for A&M. Back-to-back strikeouts for Greg Ferrone. Two away in this top of the first. Jim Schlossnagel is the head coach at Texas A&M in his third season in Bryan College Station. His first year couldn't have gone much better winning the SEC West and going to the College World Series. Third season for leading the Aggies, a Team USA coach. He's got a strong track record. Texas A&M is very happy to have him. Braden Montgomery. With two outs and nobody on base. Leading the way for Texas A&M with 20 home runs this season. Also leads the nation with 60 runs batted in. Brown falls behind. Two balls and no strikes. Tried to paint the corner, just missed. Three balls and no strikes. Good pitch right there for Greg Ferrone. Just missed, but that was a good pitch right there. And a four-pitch walk to Montgomery, but we consider some of the production he's had. It's not the worst thing in the world for Alabama to put him on with two outs. You know, 20 home runs and 60 RBI halfway through the season, that's a... For some people, a great career or a great season being completed, but he, we're halfway through this year, and there's way more in the tank for Braden Montgomery. Again, first in the nation and runs vetted in, tied for third with those 20 home runs, but slugging fourth best in the nation. 
and all those numbers continue to ride off each other when you put the first three guys, Grahovic, Laviolette, and Montgomery, you can't pitch around these guys, and they demand respect, and there's going to be traffic on the base pass a large part of the time. Now the cleanup batter, the catcher, Jackson Appel, you really can't take a deep breath with him. He's hitting 358 in the cleanup spot. Senior, I mean, just a, you know, these stats are for him are really good, having a good senior year, and they're expecting for him to continue to be a middle of the lineup type of guy. It fell for own in front, no balls and two strikes. Jackson, catcher for the A&M Aggies, tied for the team lead in stolen bases with nine, so he can, he's an athletic catcher. Another check at first at Montgomery. He does have four stolen bases on the year. Closer play that time with Montgomery leaning. The Aggies about middle of the road in the SEC in terms of stolen bases with 42 on the year. That's seventh most in the conference. Ferone trying for a scoreless first. He'll have it. Greg Ferone strikes out three. Abron due to the plate. Alabama's bottom of the first. Starts off low and inside with a fastball. Gage Miller continues to get on base at the top of the order for the Crimson Tide. He's done so in each and every game he's played in this year, 36 games. And he supplied some of the only offense for the Crimson Tide on Tuesday night against UAB. He had a solo home run. Justin LeBron had a solo homer in the bottom of the first. And then after that, Crimson Tide were held off the scoreboard the rest of the night against the Blazers. Gage Miller batting leadoff, and you're seeing that more of a trend in baseball, regardless of your offensive stats, power, just go ahead and bat them earlier in the lineup. And Gage Miller's one of those leading the team in home runs and average. Adding the count, three balls and a strike. He was hit by a pitch the other night and was able to stay in the ball game after one. Caught him right on the ankle. Sends it high to straightaway center. Laviolette there for the Aggies with the first out. Next up for the Crimson Tide from Manuel, New Jersey, left fielder, Yeah, Ryan Prager has continued to be a mainstay for AM. He's been the Friday night starter since the start of this year. Six of his nine starts, he's giving up no earned runs. So, guy that's got a lot of composure with his stuff, and that's the true makeup of Friday night guys. Ian Petrutz, Crimson Tide left fielder. He's been leading the way in conference play for Alabama at the plate, hitting 379 against SEC pitching. First four weekends, that number was well over 400. Transfer from Maryland. Gets strike call two and one. Lineup today for Bama, six of the nine hitters are left-handed hitters. So for Ryan Prager, he feels really good about the matchup here, lefty on lefty. But for the most part, Tides hit left-handers pretty well. Ian Petrudz with Alabama's first hit of the game, a one-out single here in the first. Yeah, Petrudz stayed on one right there, looked like an off-speed pitch, just on the outer half, 
went down and got it. Give it tie to base runner. Trout stays locked in, hitting 316 over his last 10 games. Oh. Already a man on base for the Crimson Tide with Justin LeBron to the plate. LeBron, the shortstop, as I mentioned earlier, homered on Tuesday against UAB. Now six homers, 20 run runs batted in. Continues hitting over 300 for Alabama. This game already a little bit different for Prager than it was against Vanderbilt as he was able to set down the first 13 Commodores he faced. Had a perfect game going into the fifth, so some early traffic on the base paths, a good thing for the Crimson Tide. LeBron sends it to left. Caden Sorrell without number two. Scoreless game in the bottom of the first. Rob Vaughn, the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide, getting to coach against the team. He grew up watching Texas A&M. He's from Texas originally, and he has led Alabama to some great home series wins already against Tennessee, South Carolina, and Arkansas. He's loved it so far in Tuscaloosa. One of the young, upcoming head coaches. The Tide is very pleased to have them, have him leading the squad. Playing that batter, Will Hodo. Power numbers are up for him, up to nine home runs after he had been hitting down in the order for a few weeks, but now back in the cleanup spot like he started the season. Will Hodo leads the team in walks. He's been the model of consistency, one of the most consistent players for the Tide. Prager behind 3-0. He does not issue many walks, only five compared to 73 strikeouts in his first 50 innings this year. Ryan Prager, three-pitch type of mix. He's going to mix in an 83 to 87 mile an hour slider, and he's still developing a very good changeup that's going to be about 10 mile an hour off his fastball. Hot smash to Ted Burton, and that'll close out the inning. The Crimson Tide get a hit, but nothing else in the bottom of the first. Made a fine defensive play to close out the first. At the plate to start off the second against Alabama's Greg Ferrone. Burton hitting 304, four homers for Texas A&M. Good pitch by Greg Ferrone right there. Fastball down in the zone. Another strikeout, four strikeouts for Greg Ferrone to begin this game. Once again, like he did the first leadoff hitter for A&M, elevated in the zone, got another fastball up. Got a check swing. Conversation with Rob Vaughn, head coach of the Crimson Tide, along with Scott Klein, who did speak with Coach Slossingle nearly the entire inning break between the bottom of the first and the top of the second. Hayden shot. Takes first pitch strike. Shot the DH has been here before. He played last season at Columbia team that defeated Alabama and took two out of three in a weekend series. And Hayden Schott played extremely well. As Looks like there was a little bit of time called for shot. He's been playing well with Texas A&M, but he hit 500 against Alabama last year in this ballpark. And he's hit by a pitch. Looks like that one just got a, got away from Greg Ferrone, trying to get on that inner half, commanding the fastball. That'll sting tomorrow. 
Well, 14 straight games, shots on base. Aggies with their second base runner after Montgomery had a four pitch walk that he drew in the first. Ali Camarillo, shortstop next to the plate. 305 hitter. It's really developed well for Texas A&M. Be interesting to see if Greg Ferrone starts to work in his changeup a little bit. He worked it a little bit last week against Arkansas against the right-handers. Just missed with a fastball, 3-0. Nothing put in place so far by Texas A&M. All strikeouts plus a walk and a hit batter. And Greg Ferrone's been very consistent since working into the weekend rotation. He hasn't had an outing where he's given up more than three earned runs. First hit of the game for Texas A&M. A single up the middle by Camarillo. A&M starting to make a little noise here in the second inning. HBP, then a nice base hit up the middle for Camarillo. 24 straight games Camarillo's been on base. See a lot of streaks like that for Texas A&M with how well they've played recently. Climbing to the number one spot in the rankings. Caden Sorrell with two on, only one out in this top of the second. Only a freshman, but off to a great start. Native of Highland Village, Texas. A&M very similar in offensive makeup to the Tide. They have five left-handed hitters. Two of them swinging it from both sides. Very strong left-handed squad in the Aggies. Four strikeouts already for Ferrone. This is the spot where he could use a strikeout. Two on, one gone. Got his fifth strikeout. Two gone. Big strikeout right there. Greg Ferrone, see that off-speed pitch, a slider, just running it out of the zone, see if he could get him to swing at it. Good pitch right there, 0-2. And Greg Ferrone doesn't beat around the bush too much. When he gets 0-2, there's not a lot of waste pitches in there. He's going right after you. Travis Chestnut, first pitch strike to him. Second baseman hitting 318, has battled injury at times this year, but he's been a solid contributor in the second base spot for Texas A&M. This thing for Greg Ferrone is efficiency in his pitches. Like we talked about his strikeouts. When he gets 0-2, there's not a lot of extra pitches. He tends to go right after the hitter's 0-2 for strikeouts. His ability to continue to command the fastball, keep him out on the mound a little bit longer to keep his pitch count down. Thus far, he's at 35. Two on with two out. Just outside a full count. Walk would load the bases for the top of the order and Grahovac waiting on deck. Yeah, if you're Travis right here, you know you're gonna get a pitch you can hit right here. Wickra Hovac waiting on deck. Payoff pitch. Outside ball four. The base is now loaded for Texas A&M. 
A&M continuing to take what Greg Farone gives them. It's been a lot of strikeouts and walks. And this is the guy for A&M they want with the bases loaded right here. High leverage moment. Great run producer, great at the top of the order, similar to Gage Miller. Hitting a lot of home runs, already 13 on the year. He's got the bases loaded, two gone. Barone starts low and inside. Important block by Matt Cassetti, Crimson Tide catcher. Took a ball in the dirt off the neck last week. He's able to come back. Nice block right there. On a slider that just got away from Greg Ferrone right there. Check it first, a little wild. Odo on a hop was able to get there. It's an interesting timing play, picking off to first base. Put like a changeup right there. Not surprised you'd incorporate that for Greg Ferrone against a really good hitter, an aggressive hitter in Grahovac. Pops this up. Backing up on it, Justin LeBron, the shortstop. Puts it away, and Greg Ferrone escapes the jam as the Aggies strand the bases loaded. Do not score here in the second. Great at bats for the Tide, and he solidified himself as the DH, the only, the only factor in here that's somewhat of a problem for him. He pitches it pretty well, too, so they have to limit his opportunities in the batter's box. Arkansas couldn't keep him off base last weekend as he was 5 for 10 against the Razorback series. Three doubles, run scored, sparked Alabama's run scoring bottom of the 10th with the leadoff double in the game on Saturday that ended a long losing streak for the Tide. And Kate Snell is one that uses the entire field. You see a lot of these lefties with the days of the shift, a lot of them defensive play in the shift, but Kate Snell is, shoots the ball all over the place and adds some power to the lineup too. Breaking ball hit to short. Waiting on the hop is Camarillo. And he'll throw out Snell to begin this second inning. One away for T.J. McCants, Crimson Tide center fielder. Veteran now in his fourth season of SEC baseball, three years at Ole Miss before transferring to Alabama. Got off to a really hot start, hitting second in the order early in the year for the Crimson Tide. Now moving down a little bit in the lineup, he's starting to get some production. Certainly was solid against Arkansas last week, as he'll have to deal with the shift. Like Roger said, TJ started off red hot, batting right behind Gage Miller, scuffing a little bit in SEC play. He's a veteran hitter. He's just been between pitches. He's had a very good Sunday game against Arkansas. I just want to see him be more of a stable, and this is not the worst thing. Put him down a little bit in the order, not to put any pressure on him. Beats the shift into right field. T.J. McCants is aboard with a one-out single. Always helps out, Roger, when you're scuffing a little bit, trying to find it. You get your first hit of the series. Beat the shift right there. Hard hit ball. Pair of hits given up by Prager so far. Evan Slight, right fielder for Alabama. Trying to get it going at the plate, a 275 average for the Rutgers transfer. Three for his last 15 at the plate coming into this series. Down evens to one ball and one strike. Evan
Evan Slight, captain for this Alabama squad. Started out the year, middle of the lineup. He's got it in the tank. Coach Rob Vaughn's moved him down in the order too. Wouldn't be surprised here. You got TJ McCants on first, leads the team in stolen bases. We talked a little bit about Alabama hitting better in more efficient spots. See if they get some action. Checking McCants thinking just that, Texas ain't in. As consistent as Ryan Prager's been, you just don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. To right field, but right to Montgomery, a hard hit line out by Slight, two gone. Well hit ball right there by Evan Slight. Just hit it right at somebody. Catcher Matt Cassetti to the plate. Everyday catcher for the Crimson Tide, especially in SEC play, even came off the bench on Tuesday against UAB. Matt he has been the mainstay catcher for the Tide. Coach Rob Vaughn's been trying to give him some breaks between the mid midweeks. He's just <laughs> seemed like he's always got nicks and bruises, blocking balls, wore one off the neck. Of course, as a catcher, he's catching a lot of bullpens as well. I mean, the practice days are tougher than the games most time for a guy like Matt Cassetti. Yeah. It, in this part of the season, your legs, you know, you got to save your legs for a guy like Matt Gassetti. Catching every single day is so tough. The Tide thinks so much of him, too. I mean, there's very few catchers that get to call their own games. Mac calls the pitches, and that just tells you the type of maturity he has and he understands, has a feel of what the Alabama pitchers have as well. 2-2. Two, two. Breaking ball ripped into left field for a base hit. All the way to the warning track before Sorrell comes up with it. McCants takes third. It's a two-out double. Mac Gassetti. Mac Gassetti right there with a the double. Looked like a slider that just hung up a little too high. Mac shoots it into the left, left field corner. Brings up Bryce Eblen, who's been a mainstay for the Tide at second base. I'll be so happy to have Eblen healthy after missing two weeks. Came back strong against Arkansas. Swing and miss the first pitch from Prager. Two run homer for Eblen helped put the Sunday game against the Razorbacks out of reach. It had been one nothing for so long. Zane Adams doing so well on the mound, but finally some breathing room for the Crimson Tide with that two run homer by Eblen. It was a back and forth game, walking that tightrope. It's a right field. Montgomery's there, and that'll close out the inning as the Crimson Tide will strand two on. 18 homers for Laviolette. Five of them have been hit against SEC pitching. It's already really talented as a freshman being named the SEC All-Freshman Team, but what a sophomore year he's had. No slump at all. Those are all consistent numbers, and we talked about a couple innings earlier. All these guys sandwiched together just makes them all so much better. You can't avoid them. Arcs it high in the air to left, but there's Petrutz with the out. I think Greg Verone's worked out of a jam last inning. Got his strikeout count up, but again for him it's been really the ability to command the fastball. He talked a lot about his last start, being able to let his defense work to, 
get them into later into the games. And that's for Coach Rob Vaughn, especially we're playing our first game of the weekend to be able to give your bullpen an opportunity to save them. And Greg Ferrone starting today, typically the Saturday guy. Do you think even more about bullpen management with game one of a doubleheader, especially two nine-inning games like this? I believe you have to for both squads because of what you said. You're playing two games today. Also, both offenses are offensively led, and especially like A&M. You need some spot scenarios where you can pick and match. For A&M, they've continued their – for Ryan Prager, you know, seven innings last time against Vanderbilt. Tanner Jones, a Saturday guy, went seven. So they've gone late into games to limit the bullpen. Braden Montgomery, who walked last time up, now gets in front three balls and a strike. But again, the Crimson Tide being careful of him, leading the way with 20 homers and leading the nation in 60 RBI. On the outside corner for a strike, full count. This tells you his confidence right there. Off speed slider, just backdoors it. It was one of those little bit off the plate, but good pitch. Foul ball will keep Montgomery at the plate. Payoff pitch. And just low ball four, hoping he would bite on the slider. Second walk of the game for Montgomery. It's a good pitch right there, and that's respect right there. Brady Montgomery you can't throw a cookie over the middle for a guy that's got 20 home runs and 60 RBIs right now. You don't never want to give up a walk. I think we're repeating ourselves. <laughs> you, if you're going to give up a walk instead of extra bases or one running out of the park. Fly ball in the right center field. Evan Slight on the move with the catch. Two gone. Montgomery will have to stay at first. Nice break right there by Evan Slight right out the gate. Got a great jump on that. His bat's been struggling, but you still got to bring the glove each and every day. Two away, Montgomery at first. Crimson Tide checking on him before Ted Burton will get comfortable at the plate. Strikeout for him the last time up against Greg Farone. Braden does have four stolen bags, not really a threat. But again, in these games right here, trying to be a, aggressive, especially with two outs to get the guy to second base. Wouldn't be surprised if you got a little action. Another check, tag applied by Hodo. Once again, safe Montgomery. Only one pitch so far to Burton. Second one, a swing and a miss. Burton now down to his last strike in danger of striking out for a second time tonight to Alabama starter Greg Farone. Just off the plate, one and two. Crimson Tide ready to celebrate a strikeout. Good 0-2 pitch right there. You're starting to see Greg Verone nibbling on that back door slider right there. Good 0-2 pitch. Has it here. A fastball at 91. Six strikeouts in three scoreless innings so far. Game to get listed on this type of list. First pitch swinging. Gage Miller high and deep in the air to left center field. Oh, 
the way gone. Gage Miller puts Alabama in front with a solo homer. One nothing, Crimson Tide. Gage Miller getting that first pitch. That ball was nuked. 16th homer of the year for Gage Miller. Looked like he got a hanging slider. Does what Gage Miller does. Deposit one in the left field bullpen. Breaks the scoreless streak for Prager on the mound. Now he's going up against Ian Petrutz. Single for Petrutz, his first trip to the plate back in the first. Chop to the second baseman, Chestnut there for the out. For Ryan Prager again, gave up a home run right there, but usually the solo jobs aren't going to beat you. The Aggies are expecting him to go deep into this game. Justin LeBron, the shortstop. First pitch fastball for a strike, a fly out to left for LeBron, his first trip to the plate. Homered on Tuesday against UAB. Talked about Prager's last start against Vanny. Went seven innings. Went, it to left for LeBron. Went six and a third against South Carolina. So he's got a lot in the tank. Only four hits were given up in those seven innings against Vanderbilt last week. Already five for the Crimson Tide in this ball game. It was a tremendous start against Vanderbilt. It's hard to duplicate those numbers every single time, not to say he doesn't have that, but thus far, the Tide getting on the board first. And he was also pitching with the lead. That game, again, only went seven innings because Texas A&M run-ruled Vanderbilt 15-0. Aggies playing the pull shift right here on Hodo. Serious power for Will Hodo, nine homers this year. Finally getting some consistent playing time in his junior season. Everyday first baseman. Those Alabama fans, Drew Williamson, who was the mainstay first baseman, wore number 18, felt like he was here for nine years. <laughs> Will Hodo takes his number also playing first base. I believe Williamson is the SEC's all-time leader in putouts with how much he was at first five-year starter for the Crimson Tide. Got that extra COVID year and, again, was a mainstay in the lineup for the Tide. Will Hodo's doing the same this year. Alabama's been putting everything in place so far for Prager. No walks, no strikeouts to this point. Behind in the count, three and one against Hoda. First walk. And it's by the team leader in walks for Alabama, Will Hoda. Again, another tremendous at bat. Again, Will Hoda, it's, it's not very common to see a pro type of development coach dropping into the college ranks, but again, these guys want to get to that next level, and he, they say he's really brutally honest at times with them, which that can be good in your development. Prager gets strike one. Snell puts this in play, but it's playable. Shortstop Camarillo. Without number two, runners stay put. It's 
It's pitching staff for AM, part of the reason the Aggies have climbed number one. All top three numbers here in Division I baseball. ERA walks and hits for nine innings, and then got to get a lot of strikeouts, and that's led to some shutout wins. It really has, and again, since Coach Wiener stepped on uh, staff, they've lowered their ERA by two runs. That's a big number when you know in the SEC play, there's so many one-run games. First pitch strike to T.J. McCants. Gets in front of McCants, 2 leaning off first base, just getting back is Hoda. Another stat that, from a pitching standpoint, talk about A&M has eight shutouts this year, so that's just complete pitching across the board. Nothing in two on McCants. Hit high and deep into left center field. T.J. McCants puts it off the wall to add to Alabama's lead. LeBron scores. Hodo's in. It's T.J. McCants with a two-out, two-run double. Three-nothing Alabama. Big hit for T.J. McCants right there. To extend this lead to three, another slider slurve. That just hung up. TJ McCant stayed with it. Almost ran it out of here. Tide will take it against a very good Ryan Prager. 40 runs batted in now for McCants. That's his SEC third best, 14th double this year. Extends the inning for Evan Slight. Already, Chris Cortez, SEC co pitcher of the week, very valuable out of the bullpen for AM. He's warming up. The bottom of the third of game one of this doubleheader. So Prager's now given up six hits so far in this ball game to the Crimson Tide and already three runs scored by Alabama. a and is probably a little bit different because of them being such a great offensive squad. Cortez, we've talked about one of the most electric stuff, high leverage moments to keep this game close. They could a and can just keep the game close and hopefully the offense will pick up Gantz in second with two gone. Alabama with another opportunity to cash in. Prager with the strikeout will close out the inning. But the Crimson Tide grabbing two runs, three runs in this bottom. Three-nothing lead to the fourth. Some run support for Greg Ferone to work with on the mound. And Greg Ferone was able to escape some possible damage with some traffic the last couple innings. Now with a little bit of lead, let's see how aggressive he is. Trying to get some fastballs, maybe some ground balls in here to get his duration. Hayden shot, first man he faces. Shot hit by a pitch last time up. That one runs inside to even the count. Another talented hitter in this Texas A&M lineup that goes from Columbia to Texas A&M. To Justin LeBron, the shortstop with the first out. <laughs> Leadoff batter set down in each inning so far by Perron. And that's just right there. Find an opportunity, let them hit the ball, let your defense work. And when you got a defense with guys like Justin LeBron, you feel really good. Ali Camarillo takes first pitch strike. He had a single up the middle his first trip to the plate. Still the only hit for Texas A&M so far against Ferone. In every game is important in SEC matchups. It's just momentum-wise, can you get the first one, especially for the road team, especially when you're 
out of your element, if you can somehow steal the first game, it just helps you so much more. And for the Tide, they're used to these moments playing the number one team. Sprayed foul by Camarillo. We'll do it again with one ball and two strikes to the Aggie shortstop. Coach Rob Vaughn talked a lot last week about the Arkansas weekend, how dropped the game on Friday, but the effort, energy, and intensity was exactly the same. They could have pitched, you put, playing against a number one Hagen Smith top, uh, you know, a top round draft pick in Hagen Smith. Fair ball down the left field line. Extra bases for Camarillo. One out double for Texas A&M. He has both hits for the Aggies so far against Ferone. Camarillo swinging a hot stick. Runs one down the third base line. Right under the glove of Gage Miller. A&M with men on base now in each inning against Ferone. So far, the Aggies have left five men on. Over two so far with runners in scoring position. First pitch swinging, Sorrell pops it up to left. But trots without number two. Good response right there after giving up a double. Get right back in the zone. And you just one more out away from getting out of a jam. Travis Chestnut, the second baseman, batting ninth in the order. Back to Coach Rob Vaughn. Talked about they dropped the Friday night game against Arkansas. But talked about the effort and intensity. intensity was so good on Friday, which led to the momentum of getting Saturday and Sunday. Talking about how the outcomes should not be dictated by, you know, the effort that you take. And I think we talked about earlier how inconsistent Alabama has been, and that's just Rob Vaughn setting his culture and his mentality to these players here. A walk for Chestnut last time to the plate helped the Aggies load the bases in the second inning before Ferone got out of the jam with a pop-up by Grahovac. Blows the fastball by him here, two and two. Fastball still sitting, 91-92, where Ferone's fastball typically sits, so velocity still there in the fourth inning. Got him swinging! Greg Ferone with seven strikeouts. The fastball is best friend so far today in forced two games of this series. Rain out last night in Tuscaloosa. Here's Matt Cassetti to lead it off against Ryan Prager. Gave up three runs and three hits last inning for Texas A&M. Cassetti with a double last time to the plate. The bottom half of this lineup has continued to be consistent for the Tide, with Gassetti being a senior, Bryce Eblen, senior, guys that got a lot of at-bats. feel really good about having these type of bats down in the order, and it's just a table setter for guys like Gage Miller. Leadoff walk to Gassetti. Just the second start this year, Prager's had multiple walks. That was a good fastball, 3-1, just out on the outer half, just could not get the strike call. Matt Gassetti takes it for ball four. Get this inning started for the Tide.
Man aboard for Bryce Eblen. Nobody out. Bryce Eblen, a lot of other schools would be in the mix to be your second, third hitter in the order. The Crimson Tide have him batting ninth, and it's helped this lineup produce so many runs this year. Prager in front, 0-2. It's a good setup for Bryce Eblen, batting nine. Like I said, for Gage Miller coming up after his first, you know, after he comes up his first time. But a lot of the times, you want guys on, you want guys on base. For guys like Gage Miller and Bryce Eblen, is typically going to give you good at bats to give you an opportunity. He's been with the Tide all four years. Miller homered last time up. Fastball low, leaving the count to Eblen. Senior out of Greenwood, Indiana. One of the top prep players from Indiana when he signed with the Crimson Tide four years ago. Has battled some injuries even into this season. Looks ready to go for the second half of the year. Knocks it foul, we'll do it again at two balls, two strikes. Bryce Eblen had a strong showing, got to play at the Cape Cod Summer League, one of the elite opportunities from a summer ball perspective to get to just ask to go play there. He had a strong showing, like Roger said, he's been scuffling injuries over his entire career. Loops it in the air to left. In comes Sorrell. Can't get to it. It'll drop in for a hit. Crimson Tide with two aboard to start the bottom of the fourth. That was hit into no man's land. The Aggies were playing the pull shift. I'm not saying that the shortstop would have gotten there, but you, you, all you have is a left fielder there. You don't have any help from a, third, a natural third baseman position there. That was on to face Gage Miller, who homered last time up. So I'm sure that was part of the reasoning, not wanting another matchup between Prager and Miller. But Cortez, a solid option, the SEC Pitcher of the Week, based off the great success he had against Vanderbilt, also against UTSA. Slow chop to the shortstop. Camarillo to second for one, the throw to first for the double play. The Aggies turn two here in the fourth. Big time double play right there, flashing the leather. Had to make a very quick feed. Oh yeah, nice double play right there by the Aggies. Scott Klein announcing that both Parts of that play are under review, not just the play at second or at first with Gage Miller hustling down the line, but also seeing if Eblen was truly out at second base. So the replay commands Central in Birmingham for the SEC office. We'll take a look at both ends of this double play. Oh. But off the base, it looked like for Chestnut before he threw to first or did he have the foot on the bag long enough it looked like the foot was coming up right when he was making the trans transfer never seen a double challenge here and frame by frame at first base looks like the outs recorded there one review for two plays So the Aggies do turn the double play. Certainly saw what the umpire saw at first base with a question at second. And I think you, when you slow it down, I think there, at the end of the day, was it enough evidence to overturn what was called on the field? It's one of those bang, bang plays that 
it's hard to overturn that one, but definitely the call at first was correct. Ian Petrutz next to the plate. Credit Camarillo as well, getting all of that started for Texas A&M. Good start for Cortez, comes into a big time jam with no outs and gets a double play right there. Ball and a strike to Petrutz and Cortez has starting experience before. He's comfortable coming in here in the bottom of the fourth and riding this thing the rest of the way to the ninth. Yeah, Cortez, they've used him in a lot of different roles. I mean, against Vanderbilt, he went four and a third. So he can do long relief, but he can also come in in a certain situation where it's super high leverage moment late in the games. That's not the point right now. I'll tell you, again, the Aggies think a lot of this guy. He's not in there to eat innings. He's just he's there to stop it right here to get the offense going for the Aggies again. Don't be surprised if he goes three or four. Petrud sending it high, sending it deep, sending it gone. A two-run homer, Ian Petrutz. Now the Crimson Tide with a 5-0 lead in the fourth. A Petrutz bomb sat on that off-speed pitch. He'd saw it the prior pitch, got it again. For those lefties, went down and got it and deposited one into the right field rager area. Fifth homer this year for Petrutz as he puts on the disco helmet. Tradition that's carried over from last year, along with the camo hats that are back for the Crimson Tide, debuted against Arkansas, just changed things up, and it's working again like it did late in the year last year for the Crimson Tide. Justin LeBron, so you talk about momentum swings. Aggies got some momentum, getting that double play ball hit by Miller. Crimson Tide getting it right back with a two-run homer. Yeah, Cortez was one pitch away from working out of that inning. Petrutz sat on another off speed, guessed right. Again, this is a good start for Alabama at this point right now, but you got to understand the firepower that the Aggies have that we're still, this is still early in the game and you know you've got to get take every opportunity that you can to keep adding more runs against a very good Aggie offense. Two and two on Justin LeBron, single last time up. And for a guy like Cortez, and I think that's why Petrutz, you can't read and react on pitches for Cortez. When you're throwing 99 or 100, you got to sit on one pitch. Sat on that off-speed pitch, saw it one time, got it again, and put a good swing on it. Full count to LeBron. Cortez with a strikeout, 99 on the fastball helps him, into, especially with four runs with two outs already in this ball game. Yeah, you know, just good swings there. I really liked our bats all day today. You know, I thought we did it. Prager's good, man. When that guy's, I've watched him a lot on video, and his numbers are silly, man. Doesn't walk people, strikes a lot of people out. I thought we just did a really good job of having a good plan against him and kind of shrinking the strike zone and not giving it bats away. And then obviously it led to a couple big ones with two outs. Big swing by E there, give us a little bit more of a cushion, but. This inning's going to be big. I mean, these three at the top right here are about as scary as it gets in college baseball. So, see what Greg's got for us here. Coach Rob Bond, this is David. Wanted to ask you about Greg's start. Again, we talked about four scoreless inning, but, I mean, it's he's commanded his fastball. But I, what I've seen is his fight in the, you know, on the mound. I mean, he's just, you know, giving you a great start. Tell us more about that. Yeah, man, it's, a, it's the dude that showed up for his visit in the Metallica T-shirt, man. That's the guy that's pitching today, you know, and, the boys love getting behind him. The boys play behind Greg really good. It kind of worked out, you know, with him cramping a little bit last week and only going 70 pitches. It made it easy to kind of move him up to that spot and keep Peter on the same rest. So, um, so yeah, Greg's executed pitches so far. And like I said, this is as dangerous of a lineup in college baseball as it gets. And he's done a good job of attacking them. And you know, I tell him, man, when you're facing a bully, you got to be the bully, you know, and, and he's done a good job of that thus far. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thanks, boys. Roll Tide. It's the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Rob Vaughn. He's got Alabama in front, 5-0. Graven Grahovac at the plate. And the 0-2. A little high from 
Ferone who's already struck out Grohovac once. Last time up with the bases loaded, popped out to shortstop. Yeah, last time he struck him out, went to the same type of pitch sequence, got him 0-2 and elevated the fastball. Grohovac makes the adjustment. Into center field for a base hit. Third hit of the game for AM and the first one from somebody not named Ali Camarillo. First leadoff man aboard for Texas A&M today. Look back to the last series against Vanderbilt. These guys were locked in 12 for 32. Prior to that single by Grohovac, nothing doing so far against Ferron. 18 RBIs in a series is uh, pretty good for an entire club, but this is just three guys, so you're going to win a lot of games from that output. But got their backs against the wall right here. But like Coach Vaughn said, you know they've got firepower and ready to strike. Especially with Jace Lavulette. 18 homers on the season. Leading the SEC in runs and triples this year. And with a five run lead right here for Greg Ferrone, you really, you know, you're still not giving any cookies over the middle to these top tier hitters at the same time. You still got to attack. Goes back with fastball, gets two and two. Bobby let a strikeout looking and a fly out to left. 0 for 2 so far in this game. <laughs> two, two. Laid off, full count. That's a touch, tough pitch to lay off as a hitter right there. A slider going away from you. Felt like it caught the plate, but just on the outer half. Laviolette puts it in play to right center for a base hit. Here comes the Aggie offense on to third base. Grohovac on the double by Jace Laviolette. A&M knocking at the door. Response right there. Good two-strike hitting by LaViolette. Running one into the gap. Setting the table for Braden Montgomery. So Braden Montgomery next to the plate. Position nobody out. One of the best hitters in the SEC. We've talked a lot about his 20 home runs. Driving in 60 runs, tops in the nation. 20 homers tied for third. Chips that one foul, one and one. But he saved a lot of his home runs for SEC play. 10 homers in conference games. Behind him, Jack Caglione, Charlie Condon, Ryan Nicholson all have nine. So it speaks to the power and when he's had the power this season. He has all those leading ranks NCAA-wise, and he's got two guys in his own lineup that are nipping at his heels, heels that could come right and take some of those uh, stats. But again, Braden Montgomery's been a model of consistency. Verona ahead in the count. To center field, McCants there for the out. Tagging from third, Grahovac will score on the sacrifice fly to get Texas A&M on the board. That's just good baseball all around. If you're Braden Montgomery, you did a job. And also Greg Ferrone finding a way to just get a sack fly again. This is the, again, one, two, three part of this lineup that is so tough to navigate. The door's not shut just yet. Clean up batter Jackson Appel with a runner at second, one gone. First pitch swinging to right center. Pass McCants all the way to the wall. Late break for Laviolette. He'll be sent home. Throw by Evelyn is short, and it's an RBI double by Jackson Appel to make it 5-2. to two. Aggies. Starting to 
to put some good at bats together. I thought TJ McCants had a bead on that, just couldn't quite get to it. Aggies are wearing out that right field gap this inning. Inning continues for Ted Burton. Still just one gone in the inning as Perone misses a little bit low with his first pitch. Strikeout swinging and looking for Burton today. He's 0 for 2. And just like Coach Vaughn talked about, you knew it was just a matter of time that the Aggies were going to strike. Slowly to shortstop. LeBron gets the second out. And also Appel stays at second base. Nice play right there by Justin LeBron, charging a slow roller. Jackson, like we talked about, is the catcher, but leads the team in stolen bases, so he has good wheels. And Justin LeBron knew he had to charge that. Made a strong throw over to first base. Aiden shot. Hit by a pitch earlier, takes side inside for a ball. Ground out to short, his last trip to the plate. It's the only difference in the last couple of innings for Greg Ferrone. His off-speed pitch location has just been just a tad erratic from the last couple of innings, and that's just as you get longer in games and get fatigued. His fastballs continue to maintain velocity, but those Aggies, Aggies offense started to pick up and put some good swings together. Let's see what Greg Ferrone comes with right here. Came with a fastball. Shot fouling it away to make it a full count. Might be the last batter for Ferrone. If you're Greg Ferrone, you threw 3 1 fastball. That's the pitch you've been able to command. Do you come back with that right here? Stayed off the plate, and that walk will extend the inning for Texas A&M. Shot on base for a second time. So the first four innings, two for 14 in the plates. Different story here, third time through the lineup in the fifth. That's just a good overall Aggie squad. This inning just happened to start with the top three hitters that they have. It looks like that's all for Greg Ferrone today. But a quality start, back end guy that can give long relief. He did that last week against Arkansas, three innings. Tyler Faye's going to come at you. Fastball sits in the low 90s. He's got that slider that you saw right there and against those lefties, which all the good lefties and Aggies, probably going to see some, some change-ups, which Tyler Faye has won. Ali Camarillo had already been two for two going up against Ferrone. Single and a double already in this ball game. Averages stayed well above 300 all throughout this season for the shortstop. Bay just missing the strike zone with a fastball at 94. Now 3 0. A walk would load the bases. Saw his fastball. He's also got some three quarter. Arm slot, that ball runs back, but did not catch enough of the plate. Four pitch walk to Camarillo. Loads the bases for Texas A&M. One of the most potent offenses, not only in the SEC, but in all of college baseball. And down five nothing, they've started to roar back here in the fifth. Again, they have, they have been, it has been with the bats, but it's also been along with taking their walks too. And you saw that right there. Caden Sorrell, the left fielder, blowing inside on ball five. It's a good matchup. Tyler Faye's his fastball 
has a little downward run on it, hopefully to get keep the ball down and command his off-speed pitch. He's got to be able to do that to shut the door on the Aggies right here. And inside, two and one. Bases full of Aggies, two gone. Clubbed high and deep in the air to right field. Grand slam home run. Caden Sorrell has pushed Texas A&M in front over the Crimson Tide. What a freshman at bat right there for Caden Sorrell. Gets a ball he can handle and gives the AM Aggies the lead right there. That ball was walloped. Put himself in a good count right there. Got a fastball and just absolutely tattooed it. Ball thrown back onto the field after it traveled 378 feet to the right field student section. So now Texas A&M, a six run top of the fifth to take this one run advantage. Just like that, we were talking about last inning, Todd put themselves in a good position with a five run lead and you just blinked. And the Aggies have the lead. Travis Chestnut trying to keep it going as Faye is having a tough time getting back in the strike zone. Fifth inning, usually the third time through the order, sometimes the second, but A&M has been doing this all season long, outscoring opponents 64 to nine. I don't know what it is about that fifth inning, but they've shown that that stat, there's nothing, that stat is real. And if Chestnut gets aboard, you have Grahovic do up next, and he will, thanks to the walk. Give the Aggies the lead. First pitch strike from Faye to Grahovac. Fifth inning has been the difference today. After a slow start offensively for AM against Greg Ferrone. And this is very typical. The Aggies, if they, if they get a lead, you're going to see them be ultra aggressive. And this is a good opportunity to get somebody in motion with Chestnut. And somebody that can handle the bat really well in Grahovac. Off the plate, Gassetti throws his second, but a stolen bag by Chestnut, his fifth of the year. Not your traditional steal right there. That's what you call a delayed steal. Chestnut gives you the impression that he was just getting a big lead. Cut, catches Matt Gassetti off balance. It's one that you practice in delayed steal. And play to LeBron. That'll close out this six run top of the fifth for Texas A&M. Once trailing five. Way to the end if the Aggies wanted to. For the Crimson Tide, Will Hodo leads it off. Team leader in walks who had a walk to set up that three run bottom of the third for Alabama. Base runners will be key here for the Crimson Tide. Cortez starts out in front, 0-2. Yeah, Cortez, we talked about his fastball sitting in that high 90s. He's got that big sweeper off-speed pitch that he can incorporate. Slow chop to the first baseman. Burton's got it for the out. Hey, 
just a good pitch right there. One, two. And then you can come back fastball at 99. It's just a tough at bat against Cortez, and that's a what reason why he can he's the one that demands SEC co-pitcher of the week. One gone for Cade Snell. Crimson Tide DH 0 for 2 so far in this ball game. Chris Cortez, he got off to such a good start with Texas A&M in 2022 as a member of the SEC All-Freshman team, 6 and 3. And then last year, been the Sunday starter for the first five weekends and then moved to the bullpen. Didn't get the same results at an ERA over seven. But he has found his spot this season. In his resume this year, as far as innings pitch, they've used him in so many different roles. Long relief, high leverage moments. Again, last couple weekends, Auburn comes in late in the game for two, to get two outs. So again, Cortez has really done it all for the Aggies. What makes it even better is last week, the starters, two or three of them went seven innings. And so you have a fresh bullpen for the Aggies for the most part. Really needed today with two nine inning games with this doubleheader, thanks to the rain out last night. Ryan Prager's day done after he pitched into the fourth. This 89 mile an hour cutter right there. <laughs> First time you've seen that. 99 mile an hour fastball. You got a cutter and a sweeping slider. It just tremendous stuff for Cortez. Then he goes right back to the 99 mile an hour fastball. Snell sticking around. Kate, another one of the Alabama hitters that's hitting better in SEC play, batting 318 overall, 375 in conference play. Showing you why. Ball four, just off the plate. Patience pays off for Kate Snell. That's just a tough at bat right there. Able to lay off that off speed pitch up high. He saw three different pitches. If you're the tide right here again, just like they were up five runs, now you're down one. Changes the way you have to approach, approach offensively, but another good batter with TJ McCants, two for two. Certainly has looked locked in so far. That single in the second inning, and then a two-run double with two gone in the third. Made it 3-0 Crimson Tide. That single got him jump sparked, seeing the ball well, but. Just past Chestnut into right center. Snell hustles to third. T.J. McCants will get the base hit to put men on the corners for Alabama. That's a tough hop right there for an infielder in Chestnut. It's kind of where you, you had no man's land. You had to charge that, but you knew you weren't going to get a good hop on it. See how they score that. Let's try and make it a tie game. And these are the spots right here. If you're Evan Slight, we talked about old senior captain. Started middle of the lineup, scuffled a little bit of a late, as of late, but the Tide's given him an opportunity where just get the ball in the outfield and do a job. Unfortunately, you got to do it against Cortez. Slowly to third and foul. One and two the count. Cortez gets in front of Slight. 
It's one of these at bats right here. You circle right here can change the momentum of the game for either side right here. If your Cortez able to get an out right here, gives you the momentum to close the door. If you're Evan Slide, if you're able to tie this game up, gives you new life. Puts it in play to left center. Is this deep enough? Sorrell with the catch, and Snell will stay put at third. Not quite deep enough for the tide right there to get a runner home. Cortez continue to navigate through this inning, see if he can close it right here. Max swung the bat pretty well thus far, see if he can keep it going for the tide. And on the corners, two gone for Mac Gassetti. First pitch just off the plate. To the Crimson Tide catcher, they're ripped to double down the left field line in the second drill walk, last time up. Stayed away with the fastball, 2-0. Oh. A few times that Cortez has put him Self behind 2-0. You're going to see if he comes back. If he comes with a fastball here. Fouled away by Gassetti on a 100 mile an hour fastball. Just a cool 100, Roger. <laughs> Effortless for Cortez, right? You see, you, you work your way to get to 2-0, and you're like, okay, I'm going to get a fastball. Oh, by the way, it's 100, <laughs> and it's got some run to it. Fought that one fell at 99. Now two and two the count. Being in defensive mode with two strikes, it's so hard because Cortez can feel like he could come with fastball at any spot, but he's also got a big sweeper, too, that he can throw. Very uncomfortable at bat for anybody facing Cortez. Just down the right field line. Can the Aggies get to it? Just out of reach for Burton. One of those right there where everybody's warning track's a little bit different. You're playing on the road. You think that you're running out of room, but Gassetti gets new life right here. Alabama trying to respond after the Aggies scored six runs in the fifth. And Cortez has the response with a scoreless bottom of the fifth. He strikes out Gassetti, and the Crimson Tide strand two. Joined now by the head coach of Texas A&M, Jim Schlossnagel. And, Coach, thank you for joining us. So what a response from the Aggies, a six-run top of the fifth. What would you like about the at-bats? Yeah, I just thought we got some balls up, and Ferrone had been pitching really well, and then we did a nice job against this guy. He's got a great sinker, just making him get the ball up and give us a chance. We'll let you get back to work. Thank you for joining us, Coach. <laughs> all right, gig him, guys. He's the head coach of Texas A&M. He's going to give all the signals and run the Aggie offense coming up here in the top of the sixth inning, and he's pushing all the right buttons in that last frame. Did the did everything right in that last fifth inning, making an adjustment. And again, we talked about offense average, being able to hit the ball for power, but it really started with plate discipline and working walks. They were able to get Greg Ferrone out of the game and make Tyler Fay get the ball in the zone. First extra base hit for the Aggies, courtesy of Jay Slavulet, who's at the plate now to lead off this top of the sixth. To see if Tyler Fay can get his fastball command back in check against the top of the lineup. Donald up to 95 inside.
And that's when he's trying to work inside and he's got that three-quarter action is coming back over the plate, but just a little too inside. He's trying to get his feel back, hopefully being out there now in his second inning, get more comfortable on the mound. Rip foul by Lavulette. Twenty-one homers for Jace last year. He's only three away from matching that mark, and there's this is just the start of the final five weekends of conference play. And oh yeah, the Aggies are certainly in the mix for SEC tournament, regionals, super regionals, and really. It's going to be key for them down the stretch to keep playing well, be one of those top eight seeds. That way they could play in Bryan College Station until Omaha. It's not. A, it's a big deal to not only be a host site, but if you're one of the top eight teams, if you win your regional, you know you're staying at the house. And they have quite a home field advantage, 25-1. and one. Trying to get him some more action here in SEC play. He's got to do it against Braden Montgomery, who is a switch hitter. So the first time we'll see him bat from the left side of the plate. His sack fly started the scoring in what turned out to be a six-run top of the fifth for a &M. and Zane Probst, fastball is going to sit in that 93-94, got a slider, and you might see him incorporate some of the a change up about 10 mile an hour off. You see his slider right there. Certainly made Montgomery off balance. Now ball and two strikes. Caught a piece of it. Ball and two strikes for Montgomery. Zane's delivery takes the ball in the back half. More of, looks like a short arm approach. It's hard to pick up as a hitter. See it one, two. He comes back with that, backs up that pitch again. Braden Montgomery tees off on this. High, deep right center, and gone. Two-run homer for Braden Montgomery makes it 8-6, Texas A&M. Montgomery keeps doing damage for the Aggies, his 21st homer of the year. That was absolutely pummeled. Braden Montgomery knew it right off the bat. Got a fastball, it looks like. Left it up in the zone. Braden Montgomery does what he does best. Runs the ball over the bullpen to lengthen the lead for the Aggies. Jackson Appel next to the plate. Still nobody out in this top of the sixth inning. Aggies now up by an 8-5 score. Both Braden and Jackson switch hitters. Seen them on the other side this time. RBI double last time in the plate for Jackson Appel. High and deep in the air to right center again. Jackson Appel with a solo homer. Back-to-back -back homers for the Aggies. It is now 9-5. A back-to-back -back home run for Jackson right there. That ball was tagged. See, he got an off-speed pitch that just hung over the plate and deposits another one 
for the Aggies. Now Ted Burton to the plate. So three homers in the last two innings for Texas A&M. It's, it's just, just a, a lineup that does not quit. It's just a crazy box score. I mean, Greg Ferrone scoreless four innings, a six spot for the Aggies that just jump started them and they're just continuing. And you see right there, it's just a mistake pitch. Both of those where they just hung up, got a little too much of the plate. And not only a mistake, but runs one out of the yard. But good response right there. For Zane right there, you have to continue to get back on the mound because yeah, the score is nine to five. Alabama's got some offensive threat that they still have, but they gotta, gotta start using it soon. Here's Hayden shot on base twice with the run scored, hit by a pitch, a walk, had a ground out short for his only out so far in this game. Sends this one to first. Will Hodo will make the play for out number two. Ali Camarillo has been on base each and every time he's come up to the plate today. He was seemingly the only man who could hit for own with the only two hits the Aggies had through the first four innings. He saw the ball really well off Gr Greg Ferrone. Been really impressed with the way he's put some at-bats together. He seems cool, calm, and collective in the box. Great start for Greg Ferrone, unfortunately. You look up and the score's nine to five before you even know it. DJ McCants coming in. That will close out the inning, but the law. It's a great start for Alabama, building up a 5 0 lead, but since then, nine runs for Texas AM. We talked about it. We talked about breathing room. We were talking about that for Alabama and what they gave to Greg Ferrone in five runs, and then we turn around. Now, Cortez has the breathing room. Ran into some trouble in the last inning with Alabama getting men on the corners with one out, but set down Slight and Gassetti to end threat. Now facing Evelyn to start this inning. A little wild to the backstop to make it two and one. Cortez has continued to get more comfortable. He got that, gave up that home run to Petrutz coming in his first inning of relief, but since then he's really done a great job of commanding his pitches. Lead off walk starts the Crimson Tide bottom of the sixth. Good start for the Tide right there. Cortez is just, as we talked about, ever since he came into the game, very good stuff. But you have to be selective against him and understand that you're only going to get one, maybe one pitch that you can really hit. But again, Bryce Eblen, older veteran hitter, Sets the table for Gage Miller. Second time that Miller has squared off against Cortez. It was Miller who hit into a 6-4-3 double play. Last time up in the fourth, that was just before the Petrutz two-run homer. Power versus power. Two and up. Still see with his fastball at 98. It's got some downward run on it, and that's just natural. To straightaway center. Lavulet there. First out. 
Gage Miller squared it up right there, put a good swing on it. Just happened to hit it right to LaViolette. Home run last time up for Ian Petrutz. Made it five, nothing Crimson Tide in the fourth. Coach Slossingle coming out. Can give you some in the tank, more than two innings. First pitch fastball fouled away by Petrutz. You see his fastball is going to be, can run it up to the mid-90s, but can locate it. Got a cutter and a slider too. Tough at bats for lefties coming from that arm angle. Out in front there, the slider. Right out the hand for a lefty. You're reading that pitch right when it comes out the hand. It looks like it's on your right hip. And next thing you know, it's in the right hand batter's box. Tough to see. Tough again there. Sadeo comes in and strikes out Petrutz for the second out. That's why you see Coach Sloshnagel go into that matchup right there. In Sadeo, just a sweeping slider. It's tough to lay off as a left-handed hitter. Two gone for Justin LeBron. Paints the outside corner with a slider. Inning started with a leadoff walk from Cortez to Eblen. Has had to stay there with the fly out of Gage Miller and the strikeout of Petrutz. If you're Justin LeBron, can you keep the inning going? Skied high to center field. La Violette just shy of the track. Will close out the inning. A leadoff walk, but nothing else for Alabama in the six. Will roll to Zane Probst back to work on the mound for Alabama. Trying to calm down this A&M offense with nine runs over the last two innings. Talk a lot about balance and for the Aggies, one of those for one big get for Coach Schlossnagel was able to keep Nolan Kane, the third base coach, played for the LSU Tigers, won a national championship in 09, coached over there for a little bit and has been with the Aggies ever since and Coach Schlossnagel was able to keep him with the Aggies, and you can see that he's been able to recruit guys that, high school guys, along with a handful of portal players who are making some noise. Now deep in the air to left field, and this is over the wall and gone. Caden Sorrell's had a two-homer game against Alabama. He makes it 10-5 in the top of the seventh. Go run a grand slam out to right field, and then a Line drive, left field, solo job right there. You think he's seeing the ball well? Just a pitch out on the outside corner. Not trying to do too much. Just runs it over that left field wall right there. Give him the Aggies the 10-5 lead. Now four home runs for Texas A&M in the last two innings, two of them by Caden Sorrell. That one left the bat at 91 miles per hour, traveled 357 feet. Travis Chestnut on base twice with walks. Alabama just took the series against number one Arkansas this past weekend. It only limited the Razorbacks offensively as Arkansas in that series 
Only picked up nine runs. Already ten runs have been scored here in the top of the seventh, and this is game one of this doubleheader today and another one tomorrow in this three-game series. Probes bounce back with a strikeout. Arkansas has a good offense, but I think Texas A&M is elite type of offense. Arkansas is more led by the likes of Hagen Smith in their rotation and overall bullpen too. So again, both of those are quality type of teams that are that we talked about in the last bit. Both regional site teams. Grohovac, one hit already today, had three hits in the finale of the Vanderbilt series a week ago. Overall, five for 11 against the Commodores. Not only five for 11, got on base four times with walks. Again, Love that out of a leadoff hitter. We talked about that. Again, the ability to hit, but plate discipline. In foul territory, Evan Slight tracks it down. Nice play there by Evan Slight. It's a thing you learn about outfielders, the ones that give you go hard early and can slow down instead of going about three-quarter speed and then trying to speed up, trying to catch the ball. It just makes it so much easier catching those type of fly balls. First extra base hit of the game was Laviolette back in the fifth against Crimson Tide starter Greg Ferrone. Get in front, two balls and no strikes. And a &M has shown you that when you make a mistake up in the zone, it's not a, hey, you get a base hit. It's we're doing damage and running balls out the yard. And so for any team facing them, You've got to live down in the zone, and for the majority of the home runs we've seen today have been up in the zone. Punch past Gage Miller down the left field line for a base hit. Laviolette going the other way to pick up a two-out double. Playing the pull shift on Laviolette. Gage Miller's playing more in the six hole. Laviolette kind of got jammed on that. But again, when it when it rains and pours in a good way for A&M, unfortunately for Alabama, that one just hurts. Well, the Crimson Tide will not have to worry about Braden Montgomery. An intentional walk will put him on base, also getting an extra force out on the base paths. But you intentionally walk him to now face the cleanup batter in Jackson Appel, who has picked up an RBI double and a solo homer in his last two at-bats. A difference an inning is made from the fourth to the fifth of production out of the top. This Aggie order. They they awoke pretty quickly after that fourth inning, and I think that just goes back to Greg Ferrone. I think a quality start on his end. We talked about that. But when you pass it off to the next guy, AM getting a new guy, and that's plate discipline again. When you're able to get the pitch count up, you can get the starter out the game. A&M has shown that. Slider hit foul by Appel to stick around at one ball and two strikes. And the Aggies have done it on a myriad of different pitches for their offensive outburst. It's been fastballs, it's been sliders that have hung up in the zone. Roll to second, Eblen makes the play to close out the inning as the only run scored this inning is a solo shot by Caden Sorrell of the seventh. Crimson Tide with Will Hodo to lead it off against Sadeo. Lefty reliever for A&M.
stopped by Burton. Sadeo makes the play. You got a five-run lead. You go right after the batters. Sadeo does that right there. Again, he's a great matchup for this left-handed heavy lineup for Alabama. Nice play over there. By Ted Burton. Lefty on lefty again with Kate Snell at the plate for the Crimson Tide, Alabama's DH. Dejo has continued to have control with his slider, throwing it when he wants to throw it for a strike and also when he wants to an out pitch like we saw against Ian Petrutz where you want to put him away, starts in the zone and just runs out. It's just so hard as a left-handed hitter to hit off a guy like this. Got him swinging, went back to the fastball for strike three. Dejo's come in here and announced his presence, throwing fastballs and sliders and going right after the batters, 0-2, and that's exactly what Coach Schlossnagel wants your bullpen to do. You've, uh, you know, we talked about it for the Tide. They had the five-run lead going into the fifth inning, lost it, and now the A&M has a five-run lead. T.J. McCann's three for three in this ball game. A great start to the series for the Crimson Tide center fielder. T.J.'s continue to see the ball better. And you see him when he's hitting well, he's using all of the field. Ran one in the left field gap, and you see right here, another hit. Four for four, T.J. McCants. He extends the seventh inning with a single. That's when you see T.J. McCants. You see right here, it's nice and quiet. What I mean by that is just there's not a lot of herky-jerky movement, not a lot of unnecessary movement. When he's quiet in the box, it's a quick swing. T.J. McCants swinging the bat well for the Tide. Another lefty-lefty matchup for Sadeo with Evan Slight. Front of the slider, nothing in two. Again, showing you that pitch. He's been, he, it's, it's all strategic with his slider. He knows when he wants to throw it for a strike and when he wants to go away with it. And I think if you're Evan Slight, again, one, two. Zadejo's not going to beat around the bush. Up five, probably going to see something in the zone. Close play in first, McCants is safe. So, qu quick move right there. I said, Dejo, that was very close. Very close. Another check, not as close. Top base runner for the Crimson Tide, T.J. McCants leading the way with 11 stolen bases. Alabama in a spot where they need base runners. Down five, bottom of the seventh. Yeah, the game has been flipped. We were talking about the Tide being aggressive, being aggressive on the base pass maybe, but now being down 10 to five, you're stu you really can't push yourself in trying to steal a bag. Fastball low makes it a full count to Evan Slight. Evan Slight putting together good at bat right here. Even though he's 0 for 3, put himself in an opportunity. Catches a piece of 93 mile an hour fastball. 
And sometimes when you're in these situations, you got to find the small highlights. And again, for him, you know, Coach Rob Vaughn talks about efficiency in the offense. Again, he's seen a lot of pitches this at bat. For him, he's just, it's going to come together. It's just a matter of time. Got him swinging on a 94 mile an hour fastball. Inning over. And Homer as he knocked it into left field. And this inning gets off to a good start for Texas A&M with Ted Burton getting in into the left field quarter. A leadoff double for Ted Burton for Texas A&M. Just another good swing by the Aggies and Ted Burton. They keep keeping the gas pedal down. Trying to extend this lead. Burton's first hit of the day. So with that hit, only Hayden Schott is at the plate now. Plus, Travis Chestnut, Chestnut at the bottom of the order, have not recorded base hits. But both of them have gotten on base with either walks or, in the case of Hayden Schott, also being hit by a pitch. Roll to the right side. Hodo will make the play himself just ahead of shot. Taking third base will be Burton. Nice play right there by Will Hodo over at first base. If you're Zane Probst right here, again, probably not the appearance that you've wanted to have, but these are the small opportunities where you can come back, close the door with a guy on third base right here to give yourself some confidence for the next opportunity that you're going to get. Camarillo with 1-0 in there for a strike from Probst. On base three times today for Texas A&M. Making some nice plays defensively at shortstop as well. Fouls away a slider, one and two. And this Texas A&M Aggies offense, I've just been really impressed with their aggressiveness in hitting off-speed pitch that's been up in the zone. They very few times have they missed those pitches and made the Alabama bullpen pay the price. A little bit of extra time for our Camarillos. The pitch clock will reset. Home plate umpire Scott Klein. Breaking ball elevated. He went around on appeal to Brandon Bips as a true freshman. In his first multi-hit home run game of his career. The way he's swinging it, there might be more in the tank. Probst starts him a little inside. Ball one. There's a big out right there for for Zane Probst. Response. See if he can complete the inning for the Tide. Prior to today, the last home run that Sorrell hit was also on the road in the state of Alabama, March 29th at Auburn. Now ball and two strikes to the Aggie left fielder. So you're saying he likes playing in the state of Alabama? I think so. I'm sensing a theme here from Sorrell. <laughs> Burden at third, two gone. Pops it up. Gage Miller. Called off by LeBron. The shortstop and foul ground makes the play, and that'll close out the end. A&M and Arkansas have put themselves in great position, and that's, as you've seen today, consistency with offense along with their starting pitching. 
And the regular season will end with Arkansas visiting Texas A&M and Bryan College Station. That could have the not only the SEC West title on the line, maybe the overall SEC championship on the line for those three games. That will be a weekend, an exciting weekend, probably exciting to watch and seeing both of those teams. You know, Ar we, as we talked about, Arkansas kind of led by starting pitching has been their strength. A&M, as we've talked about, offense. So two Goliaths face, facing off to end the SEC. Crimson Tide have not scored since there was a two-run bottom of the fourth, but a good start to this eighth inning with Matt Cassetti getting a single. That's the second hit of the game for the Crimson Tide catcher. Matt Cassetti's had a pretty good game today. Like I said, second hit, also worked a walk. Seen a lot of pitches. Again, this is always for the Alabama Crimson Tide. We always talk about the top of the lineup. But when they're getting their bottom of the lineup going to manufacture and set the table for guys like Gage Miller, it's really helped them in turning the lineup over. There's still a lot of game left. Just as quickly as A&M got six runs, this game's not over. Bryce Sutherland already a single today, homered on Sunday against Arkansas. A&M playing the severe pull shift right here. Sadeo has continued to impress. Again, Coach Schlossnagel pulled the trigger. Facing all these left-handed batters, this is his strength. And for the most part, since he stepped in, there have not really been any hard-hit balls. McCants a single, Gassetti a single, the only men to get on base against him. Ablin strikes out, looking on a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. There's paint in the corner right there. Just big country fastball right there. Just, just catches the outside corner. Just sits down Bryce Eblen. Here's Gage Miller. One gone and runner at first. Miller homered back in the third. Along with Sadeo's command, again, he's shown you he's has the ability to throw any of his pitches in any counts. He's not been giving you any trends in what he's throwing in certain counts. Again, just like Bryce Eblen, if you're Gage Miller right here, you know he's probably not going to be Trying to find a strike here. Chopped at third. One out at second. The throw to first for a double play. Second time Gage Miller has hit into one today. Maybe. Top of the ninth begins with a 97 mile an hour fastball in the inner half of the plate. And that's a report on Pierce. He's got electric stuff. Very good fastball slider, change up. I think for him to get more opportunities for the Tide is location and command. And again, these are the opportunities. Again, it's a 10-5 game. But Coach Rob Vaughn and Coach Jackson are taking notes in that dugout to say, where, how are you progressing to get into another role in your overall growth?
It's a shortstop. There's Justin LeBron making the play for the first out. LeBron over the past week has been showing off his defensive range is short. Had some highlight reel plays against Arkansas that took everybody's attention across the nation. That was some unbelievable defensive plays. And it's one thing to have a defensive play that's, you know, when a game is like the score like it is right now. But that play had to be made in big time moments. And Justin LeBron makes a lot of plays. Made one against UAB, more of a in the hole. Derek Jeter type of play and not only shows you being able to flash the leather, but he's got a strong arm. Another talented freshman to the plate, Gavin Grohovac. A single for him and just five at bats today. So he crushes this one high to center field. Maybe it won't stand out as much on the box score compared to all the home runs and everything else that's happened, but it was that leadoff single that really changed the tone of the game after Alabama had built up a 5 nothing lead. Because at that point, outside of, you know, Cam Camiro, we really hadn't had any offensive hitting. And again, he kind of broke it open. And next thing you know, the floodgates open and the Aggies showed why, you, why they are one of the strongest offensive clubs in the nation. Jace Laviolette. Two doubles for him. He doubled right after that single by Grohovac in the fifth. Setting up what turned out to be a six-run frame for the Aggies to go in front. Now George falling behind 2-0. and Gets one of the most dangerous hitters in this lineup. Good pitch right there by Pierce George. 2-0 off-speed pitch. Thus far, a good inning. Clean inning. Letting the defense work. Now in a 3-1 count against La Violette. Got to be real careful. Piece of 98 on the fastball, three and two. Fights off another fastball. Even at 3-2, LaViolette's swings are just violent. And you still hear the oohs and ahs when he takes passes at the ball. It's just a smooth swing. Steady diet of fastballs. Go back to the breaking ball here. He showed that he could throw that 2-0 for a strike. I think you throw it right here. Goes to it, and it's hit high and deep in the air to center. There's McCants for the Crimson Tide. That'll close out the inning. First time the Aggies held off the base paths. Petrutz made it 5 0 Crimson Tide in the fourth. With his home run, he'll barrel this straightaway center. Loud first out for the Crimson Tide to begin the ninth. But then after that, Texas AM with 10 runs as the nation's number one ranked team came roaring right back. It came, it came quickly, and it happened fast. On the flip side for the Aggies, Cortez and Sadeo. I've been really impressed with him outside of Cortez's one pitch to Petrutz, which act, in my opinion wasn't a terrible pitch. It's been flawless on the back end when the game was still within reach. So again, Aggie's showing you the type of bullpen that they have. I didn't have to use it much against Vanderbilt, but again, that's one of those where they've been fresh. We talked about that earlier in the starts that they were given last week against Vanderbilt. Shortstop Justin LeBron. 
Base hit to left field. LeBron's got a multi-hit game against Texas A&M. He's aboard with one out. Man aboard for Will Hodo. See if Hodo can keep the inning going, pass it off to the next guy. Sometimes in games like this, you look for small wins within the game, even if it could be a loss for Alabama. If they're able to knock Sadeo out of this game, force a &M to use another pitcher, that'd be huge for what's ahead later today in game two. Not only to get, see more pitches, get, you know, get another bullpen arm hot. And I think for, as a hitter, you have to continue to put good at bats together even late in the games, because you know, we're going to turn around in 45 minutes. If you've tuned in and watched us here, you've got some time to watch one on TV and come watch one in person. That's tough with the shifts, but Camarillo will make the play. How about Ali Camarillo for Texas A&M? Huge second out in this bottom of the ninth. Show the ability to get to the ball right there in Camarillo, strong arm. No play at second base, but makes that play look a whole lot easier than it really was. I thought there was no chance he'd get there, but unreal range to his right. So today on out away from closing this one out. Aggies in front by five. Crimson Tide with a pinch hitter, Mason Swinney at the plate. Sophomore to Phil Campbell, Alabama. In the spot of Cade Snell, giving Alabama a right-handed look at Sadeo, who's been so good against lefties. Mason Swinney's filled in at second base while Bryce Eblen was out for some time a couple weeks back and also has been the right-handed DH for the Tide at times. Late on a fastball, one and two. Coach Rob Vaughn telling Mason Swinney after sitting on the bench for two hours, grab a bat, got to face Sadeo. Tough sledding. Third strike got a 92 mile an hour fastball. Down 5 0. Texas AM came roaring back with 10 unanswered runs, and the Aggies defeat the Crimson.